And somewhere in your answer, there is probably something having to do with being who you truly authentically are, not being um, necessarily put into a mold or put into an expectation that doesn't feel aligned for you, but in fact, being true to who you are, being seen, being known, being loved, using your voice and feeling safe and knowing that you have worth and value. And of course, getting there in real life is usually a journey where we have to pass through our fear of rejection and our fear of the unknown. And so we will be talking about that today too. And so because, many other fears. I'll yeah. just add a few of my. <laughs> right. Yeah. We were all conditioned to be a certain way. And that will vary um, from person to person according to, you know, our, our environment that we grew up in but throughout our life, particularly as a child, which means our prefrontal cortexes weren't fully developed and we weren't able to logically think, hmm, that belief doesn't serve me well. And I don't even think it's true. We, we, we just absorb what's in our environment. And that goes into our wiring in our subconscious brain. And then as we'll be learning today, it really dictates so much of our, our life, our attitude, our resistance, our fear, our ability of what we can, maybe not our ability, but our willingness of what we can do. And it limits us. And it also works in the reverse. Sometimes it can propel us forward if the belief is there. Ooh. But yeah, and <laughs> I that's, love that. That's what we're going for. <laughs> that- we will go into that in depth. But the the idea is that anything that's not in our our present day automation and automation is a belief that we have wired into our subconscious so we might not even a lot of times we don't even know what's there we're not even aware of what's in there and we're going to talk about how to make those on those unaware beliefs bubble up to the surface today so that we can clarify them and rewire them I love- if we couldn't change that, if we couldn't develop an awareness, it's like we're at the, the mercy of, of that, but we can change it. Fantastic. All right? Yeah. The path of least resistance, which the brain goes for, because it's a very efficient organ is safety because, and that looks like familiarity. Mm. So yeah, that's really important. looks like familiarity. That doesn't even say looks like safety. <laughs> Yeah, you can see that transformation or creating change in our life really needs to be an inside job. Because if we're fighting against a brain that wants the familiar and we're using our willpower to try to do that or our ego strength to try to do that, that willpower is great, but it's a limited resource. And so when you put willpower up against an established neural pathway that you may not even be aware you have, guess which one is going to win? Where rewiring differs from toxic positivity is in a couple different areas. One, first of all, you just cannot gaslight your, your way into rewiring. You cannot do it. So trying is an exercise in futility. And that's kind of what, how I see toxic positivity. Um, If it works and it gives a little bit of benefit in the moment, that's probably a compassionate tool for the moment. But what, what you're going for is permanent transformation. Yes. And we're not going for whack-a-mole games where we just are trying to fool ourselves. But the only way to get beyond a limiting belief is to go through it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to dredge up your past traumas. You actually don't have to do that in order to rewire them. But you do need to get into the belief that you're holding. But Einstein gave us a 
a big hint in the healing journey when he said, no problem can be solved from the same consciousness that created it. Mm. So when we look at our problems in our life, that's a hint of towards healing. It, it hints at the reality that there's this journey out there that will involve a relinquishment of what we have decided is true about the world on some level or what we've decided is true about ourselves. Mm 